I'm starting with the stand and I'm making that mostly from Baltic birch plywood. I'd be the sides and the angle parts that go into the part in the middle and that will join those two legs, I'm calling them legs anyway, at that angle. And that full panel in the middle also covers any wires that are hanging down behind the desk. And while you're watching this, I'll talk about the desk and why I'm building it to begin with. I need to upgrade my computer and I would really like to have it inside the desk. That'll give me lots of space to put in everything that I need. I'll be using this computer for video editing. And part of the inspiration for this came from the console that I built last year, which I use in my living room, except it's got the speakers built in as well. And what's great about that is that you can get everything inside and there won't be wires running all over the place and dangling here and there. This is the piece of solid maple that will join the two wings of each leg. And as you can see, it's fairly complex to get these angles correct. But then that makes it fairly easy to put the parts together and have everything coming out looking really good. For assembly, I'm using regular wood glue and I'm firing in some one inch pins to hold the parts together. These nails are very thin and they leave a very tiny hole that you can barely see but I'm going to fill them up anyway. I want to get all the sanding done on all these parts before I assemble the two legs at the center panel because it'll be a lot more difficult to do that after the thing's put together. To fasten the center panel to the legs, I'm using two inch screws and I'm being very careful to drill the hole at the correct angle so that the screw goes right into the leg at the correct angle and doesn't come out the front, that would be bad. With that done, I can start working on the upper part of the desk. And if you thought the stand was complex, this goes a bit beyond that. There's more angles starting with the bottom. I'm using half inch plywood for that, except not the good stuff this time. I'm rounding up all the scraps that I have and I'm using those as much as I can. When you're watching from this angle, it looks like I'm gonna cut into my workbench, but I was a bit more careful than that. <laughs> Not that I haven't done that before with other workbenches or tables even, that includes kitchen tables, but I want to keep this workbench looking good for as long as I can. Guys like to say that biscuits are only good for lining parts up and that they don't add any strength. And while there's some truth to that, they don't add very much strength, but they do add a little bit. And sometimes that's all you need is a little bit extra. I gave the glue a couple hours to dry before taking off the clamps and here's what it looks like fully assembled. I set it down on the stand out of the way so that I can work on the next parts. And those are the panels that close in what I'm calling the wings. I'm using three quarter inch maple veneer plywood for that. And these parts need to be cut on an angle as well. So I'm taking down my tapering jig to do that. These parts also need to be rabbited on the bottom so that they'll cover the edge of the half inch plywood. Also make the connection there. And then I can get those glued and clamped to the base and let that dry while I cut the parts for the ends. These are angled on the top and the bottom and I need to get some veneer tape on the front to cover the edge of the plywood. And then I can mark out and cut more slots for biscuits. Once again, I'll be using those to keep the parts aligned and get them fastened in place. In a situation like this, the biscuits will also hold the part in place until you can get some clamps on there. 
While I'm waiting for that to dry, I can do some other things that need to get done. And that starts by cutting the end off this roll of cherry veneer on my table saw. I decided that I would use cherry in the center section as a contrasting wood. And I don't have any cherry plywood, so I need to get this veneer glued on the regular plywood that I have. To make the other solid wood parts for the center section, I got this chunk of rough sawn cherry that I'm going to cut up. And the first two parts that I need are long strips that will go on the top and the bottom between the two wings. Very much like the plywood panels that I put on the wings, the bottom one needs a rabbit that will fit down over the half inch plywood. This narrow strip that I'm gluing on the top here is a backer for that cherry strip at the top. And I also need it to hold the wings the correct distance apart as I glue that strip in. In the meantime, the glue dried on the veneer on the panels that I made, and these form the sides, bottom, and back of cubbies in the center section. These will be two open places on the desk where I can put things, like cameras. Now I can start building those cubbies by gluing the bottom panel in place. And then I can get the sides put on and nailed to the bottom panel. I wasn't sure at this point in the build whether I was going to leave the top of these cubbies open. So that's the reason why I put this strip on the top to keep the panels in line until I figure out what I'm going to do. The back panel of the cubby on the right needs a cutout for the USB hub that I'll be putting in. I need to be able to plug things in, so I figure that's the best place to put it. I'm adding dowels here just to give this joint a little bit more strength. And then I went back and forth on what I was going to do with the opening in the center section. I wanted some kind of grill there, and originally it was just going to be bars, but then I remembered that I made this Mac Pro grill from Cherry before, and I did it the hard way the first time with lots of lines laid out and lots of three quarter inch holes drilled on both sides, but now I have a CNC and I can let that do it while I work on other things. And really the only thing left is the top itself. I'm going to be using half inch maple veneer plywood for this a single piece that will be long enough for the whole top, except it won't be solid. I want the center section to lift out so I can get at the computer that's on the inside. Now I got continuous grain here and I don't want to mess it up and that's the reason why I'm marking these parts so that they match up after. The top is plywood but it needs some solid wood on the ends and along the front and that's what I'm cutting up here. I also need to get veneer on the edges that won't be covered with solid wood.
What I'm doing here is cutting part of the center section off so that I can mount that directly on the top itself. And then just that front part of the center section will be removable. The cleats that I'm putting on here will support the ends of that removable section. I was just about to put the top on the wings when I realized that I got to get this fan put in. This is a 200 millimeter that should be more than enough to ventilate the case. When I glued that solid wood to the front of the removable section, it made it bend, and that's what those yellow arrows are pointing at. To fix that, I made slide bolts and added clips to the back as well that lock the top down in place and keep it flush. And to get access to those, I had to drill a hole through the top of each of the cubbies so I could stick my finger in there and slide the bolt back and forth. The CNC finished making the grill, and I made it oversized, so all I need to do is cut it down to size to fit in the hole. And I'm using these small tabs that I'll glue in place and fasten the grill in the opening. I let the glue dry on that while I did some final sanding, and then I brought it out back and I gave it four coats of water-based polyurethane. And then I brought it into my office and got it set up. I have more details on the computer I used here in the video description if you're interested in that. But looking inside the case, over to the left you can see the fan and ahead of that is a power bar to plug other things in. I made a rack to hold hard drives that's mounted on foam so that it won't transmit the sound of the hard drives uh, vibrating to the case. And then in the middle is the motherboard with a bunch of wires all over the place <laughs> going throughout the case. I'm not big on wire management. When I can't see it, it doesn't bother me. So I keep the top closed and I don't see the mess and everything's good. And then over on the right, stuck up in the other wing, is the small Class D amplifier that powers the speakers that I have sitting on top. And then you can also see the power supply that is oriented so that it pulls air from the outside and blows it into the case as it cools itself, which is kind of opposite of what it does in your typical tower computer. It took about a day and a half to set up, but it's running beautifully, way better than the one I had before, even though that's only five years old. Quite an improvement and I used it to edit the video that you're watching right now.